Today I'm at Miller Motor Cars in Greenwich, Connecticut to check out a Volcano Red McLaren P1 as well as the other cars they have in stock. So let's go check them out. Look what we've got here, a 2014 McLaren P1 in Volcano Red, one of my favorite colors on this car. Look how awesome this color is. It really shimmers and shines like no other red and it suits the curvy nature of this hypercar so well. The P1 has an electronically limited top speed of 217 miles per hour, and it ran one of the fastest laps ever on Germany's Nürburgring circuit when it was new. It goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in under three seconds and to 186 miles per hour in 17 seconds. That makes it a bit faster than the McLaren F1, which at one point was the world's fastest production car and it did that sprint in 22 seconds. There's only 375 P1s in existence which makes it more rare than both of its competitors in the Holy Trinity. The Porsche 918 Spyder there's 918 units of those and the LaFerrari Coupe there's 499 units of those. This car makes 903 horsepower with its gas and electric hybrid setup. There's a 3.8 liter twin turbo V8 that makes 727 horsepower and that's paired with a 177 horsepower electric motor. The P1 has hydro pneumatic suspension, electro hydraulically assisted steering, and a rear wing that extends almost 12 inches. During its development cycle, the McLaren P1 spent time in one of the coldest places on earth, the Arctic Circle. It was also tested in extremely hot conditions at California's Death Valley. The bodywork of this car is shrink wrapped as tightly as possible over the mechanical hard points of this car and the cockpit sits right at the center. This approach helps to reduce frontal surface area but also makes it easier to manage airflow over the surface of the bodywork and into the engine's roof snorkel intake and to the active aero components. McLaren produced special lightweight seats with ultra thin carbon fiber shells. And despite their low mass construction, they're very strong and quite comfortable for longer journeys. The seats are mounted on lightweight brackets and their backs are fixed at an optimum 28 degree angle, although 32 degree Degrees can be specified to increase helmet space for when you're driving this car on the track and the finished seats weigh just 23 pounds each. The steering wheel features two buttons. The first one on the left here is the drag reduction system button. So just like in Formula One, it flattens the wing and reduces drag by 23% and ahead of the front wheels, underbody flaps reduce lift while a 50 millimeter drop adds more downforce for F1 like road holes. Holding. On the right side, you've got the I-Pass button. I-Pass stands for Integrated Power Assist, and what this does is it supplies a solid dose of electric boost when you press it. The hybrid driveline in the McLaren P1 shares a key feature derived from Formula One, the Kinetic Energy Recovery System. The race button switches the P1 into fully focused track mode, configuring the aero and increasing roll stiffness by 350%. Between the kinetic energy recovery system, the instant power assist system, and the drag reduction system, the McLaren P1 is very technologically advanced. Even though the LaFerrari is my favorite of the Holy Trinity, I still get very excited to see a P1, especially in a spec as nice as this one. I want to know, do you guys like this car, and is it your favorite of the Holy Trinity? Next to the P1, we've got an amethyst black McLaren Senna. I've shown this Senna in my previous Miller video. I really love the satin gray wheels with the red brake calipers, and you've got the red Senna details all throughout. You can see the S logo on the mirrors with satin carbon fiber. You've also got that S logo stitched into the headrests with red seat belts. Another S on the wing end plate. You've got the two exhaust pipes. And unlike the P1, the Senna doesn't have any buttons on the steering wheel. I love the look of the back of the Senna with all this mesh work. It's like a hexagon pattern all throughout here with the Senna branding right there more satin carbon fiber. I also love these pieces here. 
and of course this massive rear wing and this massive air intake behind the door. Next to that we've got the McLaren 688 High Sport that I showed in my previous Miller video with the Senna. Tons of orange accents and exposed carbon fiber. I just noticed all three of these McLarens have roof scoops. This one has the orange outline which helps it stand out a bit more and these two do not. Outside we've got a Rosa Fiorano Ferrari Roma. It looks great with the silver wheels and silver brake calipers. Black wheels would just not do this color justice. I believe it is a historical Ferrari color. We've got a lineup of F8s and another Roma. This Roma is in a color called Blue Roma, which is the launch color for this car. Downstairs in the Ferrari showroom, we've got a yellow F8 Spider next to a 430 Spider, an F12 Berlinetta with aftermarket wheels, and an F8 Tributo in blue TDF, one of my favorite Ferrari colors. TDF stands for Tour de France. Here is what I believe to be a Grigio Alloy Ferrari 458 Italia. I think it's Grigio Alloy because it has a blue hue, and I know that color has that blue hue. Nevertheless, it's a beautiful looking car and a great spec. It's got a red interior with gray stitching. And over here we've got a dark blue 812 GTS with diamond cut wheels and carbon fiber center caps. Over here, we've got a 488 Pista Coupe in Grigio Silverstone. You guys know I love seeing new Pista specs, and this one is brand new to me. I'm very happy to see it. I love the satin gray wheels, carbon fiber center caps, just like on the 812 GTS. It's such a small detail, but once you notice it, it really makes a big difference. It's also got carbon fiber at the back here in the engine bay and it has the Italian flag at the back which is a cost option. We've seen it a few times at my Ferrari Long Island dealership. This one does not have an exposed carbon fiber rear diffuser nor does it have carbon fiber here but it does have exposed carbon up front here as well as on the side for these air intakes. What I love about this Pista is its subtlety. It's got a dark blue and silver stripe that runs along the length of the car. The gray wheels, gray paint, it's definitely under the radar, but that's what I like about it because I've seen so many bright and loud pistas. It's nice to finally see one that's a bit more toned down. Here we've got another 812 GTS in black with vintage tan leather next to a blue Mirabeau 430 Spider and the blue TDF 360 Challenge Stradale we saw last time, and a gorgeous Dino. I just noticed this car only has one mirror on the driver's side. And over here, we've got a Portofino, F8 Tributo, an F8 Spider, and the Ferrari 599 SA Aperta. This car is one of only 80 ever built, which makes it one of the most exclusive Ferraris ever. It's the drop top Roadster version of the Ferrari 599 that debuted in Paris in 2010. They decided to only make 80, so it'd be one for each of Pininfarina's 80 years in operation. This special edition convertible is a 599 based Roadster featuring the six liter naturally aspirated V12 engine from the GTO and a light soft top. SA refers to Sergio and Andrea Pininfarina, the patriarchs of the family business, and Aperta is simply Italian for open. Rather than a folding hardtop, a flip back roof like the 575 based Super Americas, or a simple cloth top, the SA Aperta has an emergency rainstorm only roof, similar in concept to the Porsche Boxster Spa. 
fighters. The V12 engine makes 661 horsepower, which matches the 599 GTO's horsepower amount and trumps that of the base model, which makes 612 horsepower. In the process of chopping the top, designers had to reshape this car's windshields, pillars, and cabin. I love the look of these elongated rear buttresses. It really adds a sense of elegance and beauty to this car. This beautiful 2011 599 SA Aperta is finished in a pearl white color called Bianco Italia with a blue medio interior. When new, the start price was $515,000, but with all the options this one has, the total price is $630,220. But of course, since time has passed, it is worth a bit more than that now. Since the windows are up and the roof is on it's hard to see the interior but take my word for it this blue leather interior is stunning there's blue leather everywhere and there's even a plaque in the middle near the climate controls that says limited edition one of 80. you can see the blue leather better here and it's got white stitching to match the exterior color as rare as this car is i've actually seen it before a few years ago during the summer, I saw this exact car at my Ferrari dealership. I remember it was parked right in the center of the showroom. Upstairs, we've got a 1968-206 Dino in Rosso Dino. And we've got not one, but two 430 Scuderia 16M Spiders. Which spec would you guys take? Rosso Corsa? Or Grigio Titanio? I love the look of these carbon fiber race seats. And it seems like on the older Ferraris, the embroidered prancing horse was a lot bigger than it is now. You've got mesh to save weight and tons of carbon fiber. Inside of the Bentley showroom, we've got a 2017 Bentley Bentayga in a gorgeous green color called Verdant. It's not too often you see green luxury cars, but I'd much rather have this car in green than in white. And in front of the Rolls-Royce showroom, we've got this two-tone Rolls-Royce Cullinan with a satin silver bonnet and a white and blue interior. I'm back at Lamborghini Greenwich with the 1 of 20 Lamborghini Centenario Roadster. It's always great to see this car. Next to that, we've got a new car, the 2020 Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Coupe. It's pre-owned, but it's new in the showroom right next to the Centenario. Matte silver paint with matte black accents. They're asking $689,900 for this SVJ. For those who don't know, they only made 900 SVJ coupes and 800 SVJ roadsters. Behind Lamborghini Greenwich, we've got two Urises and a Huracan Evo. This Urus is fitted with the 23-inch Tijet wheels in shiny black. These wheels cost $5,051. It's also got nice orange brake calipers and a black leather interior with orange stitching. So that was my visit to Miller Motorcars in Greenwich, Connecticut. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.